everybody, this is Lindsay from WindingRoadCrochet.com and this is part three of my video series on how to use a corner to corner crochet graph for a double crochet project. If you didn't catch the first two videos, definitely get the link in the description box below. The first video we will talk about uh, the difference between corner to corner crochet and double crochet and how your projects will turn out. The second video we go over gauge and how to get your project to turn out the exact same size as the project was intended to come out. In this video I'm showing you how to prep your graph so you can work from a corner to corner graph for the double crochet and make your project go smoothly. And then the very last video I'm doing a time lapse of this flamingo project and giving you lots of different tips and tricks to make your project go easier. Let's go ahead and take a look at our graph. Now you can get this exact same flamingo graph on my blog post for this tutorial and you can download it and there's a link in the description box below for that. Now we've already went ahead and figured out our gauge for this pattern. We have printed out our graph. You're going to need a ruler and a pencil in order to make some adjustments. As discussed in the previous video, our formula for converting this from a corner to corner graph to a double crochet graph is every square is going to equal two double crochet. Now to represent this on our graph here, we are going to take our ruler and our pencil and draw a neat line in between every square vertically. So after we've added extra lines to our graph, our next step is going to be writing the basic pattern for this project without taking the color changes in mind. So the first thing we will do is find out our starting chain. Now we have 11 squares along the bottom here and we know that every square is going to have two double crochet. So we will take 11 times 2 and we know we need 22 double crochet for each row. And then we will need our turning chain. Now turning chain is personal preference. I prefer to use a chain two as a turning chain for a double crochet, but at the same time I do not count my double crochet as my first stitch. You can adjust this for whatever works for you. But for me, my starting chain is going to be chaining 24. Then for row one, when I write out row one, I know I'm going to double crochet into the third chain from the hook and in every chain across, which is going to give me a total of 22 double crochet. Then the rest of our rows will be exactly the same. So row 2 through row 19, because I have 19 vertical rows, it's simply going to be chain 2, turn, and then double crochet in each stitch across, which will give me 22 double crochet. This seems like a really simple step, but it just helps you from getting confused. It reminds you how many stitches you're supposed to have, because in case your count becomes off somewhere, you'll be able to go back and fix it a little easier. Another nice little trick to keep you from getting confused while working this graph is to mark at the beginning of each vertical row showing a little arrow showing which direction you are going to be working that row. So my odd rows I'm going to be working, I'm always going to be working from the right to the left because that's how I crochet, but on the pattern I'm going to be working from right to left and on my even rows from left to right. That way you won't get confused in the middle of your rows which way your pattern's supposed to go. Another tip to help avoid confusion is since we are no longer working on a diagonal, we actually don't need this bottom row of numbers and sometimes you'll have a row of numbers on the left side and on the top. You can definitely scratch those out in case they will confuse you while you're working the graph. Now before we go row by row and write out the color changes, let's take a quick look at some situations where we might actually change the colors of a certain stitch. So here I have a rather steep mountain and working at corner to corner crochet requires me to take these really big steps. Now if I was working this as a double crochet, because there are two double crochet for every square, I have the ability to improve the 
angle of this little mountain here. So what I would do is go ahead and add a few extra double crochet in the green right here on top of these steps. So where it's jumping up two squares, I'm just gonna work basically half of square, which is something I can't do in corner to corner crochet, but in the double crochet, as I said, I can improve this to give us a nicer looking mountain. We don't have any examples of this in the flamingo example, but I just wanted to give you some ideas that you're, of course, not stuck with what you see. You can always make improvements to the graph when you're working double crochet. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually write out the pattern for our project using the color changes. And this is pretty commonly done with corner to corner crochet as well. The first thing I'm going to do is write a key off to the side. I'm using B for blue, Y for yellow, P for pink, and L for black. And I'm going to use this to indicate how many double crochet in each row I am going to be working in a specific color. So if you look at row one, you'll see that it's all blue. It's down at the bottom. Remember, we're working bottom to top. And I'm gonna go ahead and write out a few of my rows to make this easier so we can move through it a little faster. So starting with row one, row one is all blue. So I'm gonna put 22B for all blue. For row two, again, we're coming back from the left to the right. We're going to have eight blue double crochet. There's four squares, so there's gonna be eight double crochet. We're doing four yellow double crochet. And then we're doing five or 10 blue double crochet, five squares. Now moving up to row three, we're moving from the right to the left. And this is the reason, since we're changing directions each time, this is part of the reason it's really nice to go ahead and write out your pattern. It also gives you a really good chance to kind of consider where you're gonna have color changes. So for example, when I reach row five, I see that there is yellow in two different places, but if I was to carry my yellow from the first section underneath the blue, which is gonna be in between two blue squares, to the second section, well, it's not gonna look right you're probably gonna see the yellow peeking through. So yes, I am gonna to have to clip my thread and pick it up later and just have two more tails to weave in. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up, but the idea is you're just gonna be putting a number and a letter indicating the number of stitches you're going to do with that color and continue to work yourself back and forth. This is a really great step not to skip because it's definitely going to help keep you organized when working this pattern. So now that we have our graph adjusted, we have our key, we have our pattern written out, both the basic pattern and the color change pattern, we are all ready to go ahead and get crocheting on this project. I really hope you've liked this video series so far. If you have, definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel for more video series like this. And check out my next video, a link will be in the description box below where I will actually do an entire time lapse of this project as well as share Lots of tips and tricks about carrying yarn, about making your project look really nice and go really smoothly.